This is our last podcast in this unit, uh, 4.1.8. I want to talk about renewable energy resources. I'm actually going to talk about two of them. I'm going to talk about solar and wind. There's also uh, biofuels. There are lots of things that uh, we could uh, talk about. But uh, the sort of the two main ones that have kind of gotten uh, a hold of the world is solar. So let's talk first about solar heating. Um, there's actually two kinds of solar heating. There is active solar heating and there is passive solar heating. In an active solar heating, you have a system like pictured right here where you have uh, you know, the sun. Solar comes from, coming from the sun. The sun shines on something and it basically heats something up. Almost always it's heating up water. And so here we have a, a collector. There's several varieties of how this would be designed. So the collector then heats up water. The hot water is pumped, as pictured with pink here, down to a hot water heater. And then there's an exchange. This, this goes through here. And this is the tank, the water that you're actually going to use. It heats up your water. And then it then returns some kind of a pump system. You have to use some electricity. And it's just pumping in a circle um, the heat. And you have supply. And this is the hot water that you're going to use. And now you have hot water and this for your showers and those kinds of things. Now, it may also not just be to heat up water uh, for your, uh, you know, your uses, your hot water, like a shower or, or your dishwasher. But also, it could be used to even heat your house. You could uh, pump pipe these pipes all throughout your house and of course you could heat uh, a house. Uh, a second design really is kind of similar and where you essentially just have a uh, a reservoir of heat because uh, obviously when it's sunny maybe in the middle of the day you may not want to be taking a shower you may not want to heat your house so you have a reservoir and then as a reservoir can then be used to pump when you want to this controller will tell you know where you want to pump the water um, if you got some kind of water heater so solar heating has been around for a long time um, yeah uh, another one that's uh, very common and very common here where we live in the mountains is passive solar now in passive solar what you essentially have is you take advantage of the time of the year so in the winter time um, you know what the angle of the sun is depending on where you live um, is you want the sun to shine through your windows so if it shines through your windows um, then uh, it'll heat uh, your house this would of course be the cold side of the house but you might have something right here you know particularly you'd put things like uh, brick you know, uh, some kind of brick right here where it's very, where you want to heat this up because the brick will then gets heated up and then it, of course it, it releases its heat very slowly. So in the middle of the day, noon or whatever, it's going to heat it up. Now in the summer, if you want your house to be cold, you want the, sum, the summer here uh, to hit like the roof and then not come into your house because of course you want to keep your house cool in the summer. So it sort of depends on on, on also where you live to some degree. If you live in Houston or something like that where it's a hot day, obviously you want to try to keep, keep everything cooler and so you want to play that game. But where we live up here in the mountains, we typically want to get that heat um, from our house. Here's a, a typical solar, passive solar house. By the way, uh, you would always be facing, if you're in the northern hemisphere, to the south. So this would be the south side of a house. The sun would come in here and it would heat, and if they've done this right, and I'm sure they have, um, they've got some kind of ceramic or brick or something like that in the, in, behind this glass that's going to stay hot. Now this looks like it's a summer day, so it looks like they got the doors open. So they've got lots of exposed glass, and this, this house looks like it's very well designed for solar heating. So if you've got a south-facing um, part of your house, and there's not a mountain in the way or something like that where we live, you could really take advantage of solar heating. You have to design the house right, though. I mean, if it's not designed right um, then well you're gonna have a problem okay one of the sort of leading edges in um, solar power right now has been solar electricity which is photovoltaics okay um, what you have is a rays of cells containing a solar voltaic material that converts solar radiation into electricity so the Sun comes down boom and it hits these uh, photovoltaic cells and it produces electricity. It's a very quiet process and it produces electricity and then you can uh, have that electricity go into the grid system. Um, um, yeah. Now, of course, one of the problems is, of course, you're not going to be producing electricity at night. Um, also, in the middle of the winter time, you will produce less electricity because, of course, there's less sun. So it sort of depends upon um, on what you're going to uh, need or do, but it's a very, very powerful 
uh, opportunity. Some home uses, you can also put uh, the same concept, put fo photovoltaics on top of your roof, and as the sun comes up, this would be a south-facing roof if you're in the northern hemisphere, uh, assuming that's where this is, uh, southern hemisphere, you would have the reverse. Um, and so this person probably has this, and realistically, what this person is actually doing, is, I'm going to give you a word here, it's called a grid tie system. The most common thing that's being installed on homes now is what's called a grid tie system. So what happens is this is producing electricity, and it's pumping it out to the um, transmission lines so that everybody gets to use this electricity. And then at nighttime, um, when they're not going to be producing the electricity, they'll be getting electricity from the uh, provider from whoever they sell uh, that provides the uh, electricity for this particular house. And so the cool thing is is that uh, what happens is you have a meter and uh, during the daytime it actually runs backwards if you are producing enough electricity and during the daytime it's running forward. So it's pretty it's a pretty cool system um, and you can essentially you know they essentially the most uh, electrical um, companies are now required by law at least in the United States to um, purchase back your um, electricity that you produce that is not being used. And so it's usually a pretty good deal, although at present, 2010, when I'm making this, these systems are still quite expensive. Um, to have one for an entire home, I keep hearing a neighborhood of about $15,000, maybe even as much as $20,000 um, to install this. And, you know, if someone pays, you know, you know, two hundred dollars to three hundred dollars a month, maybe for electrical bill, that's going to take a lot of years to make that up. So, um, but you know, some people do it because it's good for the environment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera.